Dear Andy Burnham, my colleague from Greater Manchester, dear Professor Eladi, ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in outlining the strategies of, for a sustainable urban development of Karlsruhe as a green city. Let me start by briefly introducing to you the city of Karlsruhe, located in the southwest of Germany, and to address our initiatives for a green city. Karlsruhe is a young city, founded in 1715 and built on the model of Versailles by the Margrave at the end of the Baroque period. With its fan-shaped layout, the city of Karlsruhe is one of the last European cities to have been planned in the middle of the forest, mirroring the approach to design in absolutist times. The north half of the city was transformed into green spaces, whereas the south half was subdivided following a fan-shaped layout with the streets radiating from the palace. This close link between urbanization and landscape has remained a distinctive feature of our city to this day. Due to this close link between city and nature, there is also a high proportion of protected green spaces in the city. This means that only a few new construction zones are available for development. The region features a great wealth of diverse natural areas, from the Rhine Valley to the vineyards and the foothills of the Black Forest. Each natural area has its own history, distinctive landscapes, structural elements and unique species. Because of this exposed geographical situation in the Upper Rhine Valley, the city of Karlsruhe is one of the municipalities with the highest average temperatures in Germany. The green city is a key element for the future urban policy, covering areas such as urban development, mobility, climate, environmental justice, health and nature. The documents relating to the urban aspects, the land use plan, the landscape plan, the climate adaptation plan and the climate protection concept support these, cla these claims as do the sustainable urban mobility plan and the city of Karlsruhe's special ag agenda. This special agenda defines the strategic objectives which will guide the city's special, special development. This includes improving the quality of the urban environment, preserving the quality of life and living conditions and highlighting the city's specific assets, protecting climate-adapted landscaped areas and fostering responsible and socially equitable growth. Urban planners, elected representatives, committees and the general public have agreed on these objectives. Development sites are scarce and designated with great restraint as part of a resource-efficient development policy. The overall objective is to maintain the large green spaces in the different neighborhoods. We are talking about a two-fold development the great creation of urban spaces on the one time and the same time a greater focus on green areas. Finally, I would like to underline that with the future challenges in mind, the city's initiative does not only aim to contributing to climate and nature protection, sustainability, environmental justice and health, but in particular wants to win over citizens as well as companies for this initiative. With this in mind, I wish the best for the success for your project. Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie Asher, the Mayor of the City of Greater Geelong in Victoria, Australia. We're a bayside city around an hour's drive from the state capital of Melbourne, and our region also takes in a number of coastal towns that are very popular with tourists. Because we're so close to Melbourne but enjoy a more relaxed lifestyle, we're seen more and more as an attractive home for people looking to escape the city. The advent of more flexible work arrangements as a result of COVID has increased this appeal even further. 
As a result, we have big challenges and opportunities in front of us in terms of how we manage population growth. We're very wary of the need to maintain what people love about living here, and a big part of that is access to the natural environment. Around four years ago, our community came up with a 30-year vision for Geelong to be recognised as a clever and creative city region. And two of the key goals within this vision are about sustainable development and protecting our natural environment. And so naturally, the implementation of clever and creative green infrastructure is a real focus as we take the city forward. To offer some key examples, a project called the Green Spine in our CBD has won national awards for civic architecture. The vision for the Green Spine is to create a linear park running all the way along one of our main city streets, connecting the prominent public parks at either end. And so far, the first of six blocks has been completed with the remaining work still to come. The completed block saw the planting of 120 established trees and more than 4,700 shrubs and ground covers, making a direct contribution to our aim of achieving 25% tree canopy across the region. Now that involves a million trees being planted over 10 years. Thermal imaging has clearly shown the benefit of the tree planting through the creation of shade, making the street a cooler and more appealing place to visit and spend time. It's an extremely popular place to be. The project also features innovative passive stormwater systems and water sensitive urban design. Away from our city centre, we're in the process of constructing a 500 hectare wetlands and nature reserve that will provide a critical drainage solution for one of our large growth areas. As well as being a vital piece of infrastructure, the Sparrowvale wetlands will also increase our biodiversity, provide around 140 hectares of public open space and become a new tourism draw card. In the seaside town of Port Arlington, we've installed a national award-winning shellfish reef, a nature-based coastal defence solution. It's made from steel cages filled with rock and scallop shells that would otherwise have gone to landfill. And it's proven to be very effective in preventing erosion and reducing wave energy. It's also attracted a range of marine plants and sea life. Not only is it environmentally friendly, it's practical as well because it's very low maintenance and much cheaper than traditional measures such as rock seawalls. Looking ahead, we're planning for blue and green infrastructure to play a central role in the development of our major new growth areas to the north and west of our city. We're looking at 110,000 people moving into those areas. These growth fronts will accommodate that large share of our population growth over the next decade and beyond. And in these areas, we want stormwater management, landscape, open space, and public and active transport to be closely aligned and complementary. Specific features will include dedicated habitat corridors and pollinator pathways, minimum tree cover requirements, and significant regeneration of local waterways. By establishing strong ecological values and re-establishing flora and fauna native to the area, we can support biodiversity, reduce urban heat, and create really appealing places to live. As Australia's only UNESCO Creative City of Design, we're aiming to harness innovative green infrastructure to design an environmentally sustainable and people-friendly city of the future. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to further discussion during the panel session.
Bridgewater is a beautiful community with incredible scenery, amazing trails. It's also a very tight-knit community that's protective of itself, but at the same time, very welcoming to others. It's an old town. There's a river that runs right through the middle of it, and a lot of old homes, which are nice to look at, but they're not exactly energy efficient. This house is not insulated. I mean, we are on our final payment of last winter's power bills. Energy poverty is uh, when people spend more than 10% of their available income on energy for their home and for their means of transportation. What it feels like to live in energy poverty, though, is just as important. Definitely put strain on our relationship as a family. Not that there weren't good times, but because of the stress from living in energy poverty, there were also a lot of bad times that we didn't need to have. It makes you feel ashamed. This is an idea that can change not only this community, but other communities in Canada as well. In 2018, the town completed a community energy investment plan. And the purpose of that plan is to lay out how can we have access to clean, affordable, secure sources of energy. We will be working to improve the energy affordability and security of over 1,100 homes and for all of our community's transportation systems. Being part of a growing community means that you're seeing new houses being built uh, and that makes it very easy to forget that we have a lot of older housing stock in the town. So the age of the homes that are in Bridgewater definitely proved to be a challenge. There can be a lack of existing infrastructure in the home, so things like central heating systems and proper heating distribution throughout the home. At the heart of the program is an intelligent energy management information system that connects directly with people's homes and helps them plan, cost out, and monitor their home improvements, making energy more affordable and leaving more money to spend on what really matters. We have the opportunity to pool together groups of upgrades so that we can actually create investment opportunities for private investors who want to help support those energy improvements within this community. The improved use of community data and connected technologies lifts people out of energy poverty by helping them navigate the community services and energy solutions they require. By prioritizing our most vulnerable residents, we are creating positive outcomes for the entire community. I absolutely think that this will bring the community together and I think this is actually a concrete poverty reduction strategy. The Smart Cities Challenge is allowing us as a community to focus on what the energy system of the future looks like in this community, in a rural context, and to design that future in a way that we would otherwise not have access to. By investing in Bridgewater, smart cities can enable communities across this country to deal with both their poverty and climate crises at the same time. <laughs>